Hello everybody, this is Frogman. Welcome back to Serious Engineering. Just kind of down here in the mob farm doing a couple of things because uh, we do have the availability of some nice little things from Torchmaster and I've been kind of tired of dealing with the fact that those floors can spawn mobs passively and those Undertakers and their... Um, what do you call them? The little undead fellers. They they kind of goop, goop up and cause problems in here. So uh, mainly because they can't get through that one wide gap right there. At least the Undertaker can't. And then the undead creature, critter, whatever you want to call them, they can't get up the little elevator. And aside from making that wide enough to make everything work and then making the elevator over there wide enough to make it work, I went ahead and purchased a dread lamp and a mega torch out of the shop. So those were pretty cheap, pretty much, considering the fact we've got lots and lots of stuff. So 200 for that and a mega torch. Mega torch. There we go. Mega torches will prevent passive spawns of hostile mobs in an area around the torch. And the dread lamp is going to prevent passive mobs, regular mobs like bats and cows and chickens and things like that, because all of those little yellow dots up there on the mini map up here, you can kind of see those are all bats for the most part. They're all bats. So I I just got tired of dealing with it. I was starting to see a little bit of an actual lag problem because the, I probably had 100 bats in there. <laughs> so we took care of that. I've got the mob farm kind of slowed down for right now. I have more than enough iron to deal with for quite a while. And I think if anything, what I may start doing is... Speaking of... What I may start doing is I think we're going to come down here and light the uh, blaze spawner up so that we can start collecting some blaze rods because blaze rods, you know, blaze rods are pretty decent fuel. So we could technically be running some of our base off of that. So let's roll back upstairs. We had a project that we were working on from last episode that I think we need to complete. At least I got all of the parts built up that I need to be able to actually make it work. So let's run up here. And yes, I still need to do this little project. I'm kind of waiting on one more piece of technology to make a really neat way to get up and down. So we're, we're kind of just waiting on that. So let's take a nap and we can kind of talk about what we're going to do. So we, were, we're, we have been working through some of Nomadic Craft's uh, parts pieces, machinery, things and stuff. And we got the assembly controller, but we need to get the rest of the assembly, machinery, army, thingy, whatever you want to call them, parts. So in between episodes, I crafted up a whole bunch of stuff and I purchased the other two uh, programs for that thing so that we can start doing a little bit more fun with this. So let's toss those away and clean up our inventory just a little bit because we're going to need a bit of space. So I think I'm actually probably pretty well done with that for the moment. Uh, Moss stone, you can go over there. All right, that's a lot better. Cool. Okay, so in this chest, I crafted a bunch of the stuff up that we need, plus a whole lot of an extra compressed iron, so we're going to go ahead and grab every bit of that. We don't need these right now, but we're going to go ahead and work on it. So, at Pneumatic Craft, in order to make the crafting of the printed, unassembled, print, unassembled PCBs a little bit easier, because right now what we have to do is we have to use an empty PCB that we etch with etching acid and then um where is it at come on brain run this thing through a, a uv light box to get us an empty pcb that we then etch in etching acid and we don't have to deal with the time and all that fun stuff we can cut that entire step out so or those entire two steps out by getting into the machinery that is part of this and this is one of the fun parts about this mod these things are really cool they're fun to watch they're animated they're all kinds of neat stuff so in order to do this, we're going to need a whole bunch of pneumatic cylinders. And pneumatic cylinders are made with a lot of blue plastic and cannon barrels and pressure tubes. So let's see. Do we still have some glass? We do. I'm going to try to do this reasonably cheaply because from here on out, we're not going to be using these tubes for anything other than crafting. We're going to be going straight to the better tubes. So... Let's start with, we need, what are these? This is two, let me see, where are we? Assembly I.O. unit, we need two of these guys. So that means we need six pneumatic cylinders. 
So we'll just do that because I know that's going to be too many because that gets us two. So one, two, three, and there we go on that. Now we're going to be using these quite a bit. We actually need them for the drill and the laser as well. So one, two, and there we go. That should be plenty of those. And I think the only ones we need left now are the assembly platforms. So we need one more set of these. Perfect, good. There's all of our parts that we need. So the assembly IO unit, pretty simple. Hopper, some pneumatic cylinders, some compressed iron ingots, and some printed circuit boards. We need two of those. The assembly, let's do the drill next. Drill requires an iron, or an iron, a diamond. We can do that. And the laser, which we're going to be able to use to etch various things, requires a little bit of red dye, which we have plenty of stuff. Finally, the assembly platform, which required some orange plastic. So there we go. We got all of the little parts that we need to be able to make this little sim system function so again temporarily we're building it right here just so we can get into the next version of the pressure tubes that we have available because the next version are a lot better they can carry more compressed air further faster kind of thing so it's one of those you kind of want to get to them as quickly as possible so i want to do the laser right there that i should say the laser the drill the assembly platform and then I think we can make it work like this. Problems. Okay, nice. All right. So uh, we need to be able to do a couple of things first. And the first thing I want to do is I want to set up another little thing here. We need a chest for the input output of the system. And I think that should work. And we need to set one of these guys to input. Input or output. There we go. All right. So one of these guys is going to pick one of these arms is going to pick up parts and out of this chest and place it on this assembly table. The other one is going to pick it up out of the assembly table, put it back in the chest. Now, hopefully this little setup is going to work and I don't have to do any changes. I may have to joggle things around a little bit. So to test and again, like I say to test the fun part is now I might be a little slow for the second. But if I do that and I put a, a laser program in there, we should have an arm go grab one of those circuit boards. Come on. I know you guys are slow. He grabs it and he brings it over very slowly and he places it in the table. How are we doing on pressure? We're going to run out of pressure. That's kind of what I was thinking about maybe doing with these blaze rods is that some of our stuff is actually going to be usable with blaze rods, like power generation for that matter. So we'll make sure these guys have a little bit of air pressure while we're working. So we have plenty of air pressure here. And if I really feel like it, I can stick one of these speed upgrades in you, and that will dramatically increase the speed of the process. I think we have plenty of air pressure. Go ahead, stick that in there too. Give it two. And it's going to use a little bit more air pressure, but if we look, that should have removed an entire step from the process. Now we have the unassembled PCBs straight from an empty PCB, so we don't have to use this thing anymore, and we don't need the etching acid anymore. So I'm going to let it finish that craft, and I think we're maintaining air pressure reasonably well. Cool. The next thing I want to do, hello emails, thank you, is I want to craft a bunch of the advanced pressure tubes. And the advanced pressure tubes, there should be at least one or two ways we can make these things. And I believe the usage is on this, where I just take a block of compressed iron, I have all of the machines that we need, and an advanced, and we'll get an advanced pressure tube. So let's make, very quickly, where are we? There we go. A couple of blocks of those. Matter of fact, make all of it. We, we got lots of... Crud. Where did it go? I'm really beginning to not like this mod, but whatever. It does do what I need it to do. So, 
You guys should have finished up your little project. If I take the program of the laser program out and I put the drill and laser in and I do this, and we can grab those and put them over here. It's such a cool little thing. He's going to put it in the table. He's going to get out of the way. And one of these should light up and go to work. Should. Unless I am completely wrong with that account. I don't think the drill can get to it. I may have to move the drill over here. There you go. So he's going to drill a hole through the center of that block. And that's going to turn it into the pressure chamber valves right there. And then this is going to go ahead and cut it into the pipes. How are we doing? Plenty of pressure? Cool. And there are, are pipes. And it's, there are many ways to get those pipes. That, as far as I know, is the cheapest way possible. So... The pressure chamber valve is a, that's just, you can do it without the other lasers. I mean, you can do it without using that particular program, this pro particular program. You can start with the drill on a, where is it? You can start with a drill on a pressure chamber valve, and, which will, come on, over here. Regular block of compressed iron, which will make a pressure chamber valve. And then that can then be drilled or lasered into the thing, or you can use the combined laser program for that little process. So we need a bunch of that pipe. How are we doing? We still got pressure going on? Good deal. Keeping up. It's not using near as much air pressure as I figured it was going to. You guys are going to shut off pretty quick too, I hope. Please don't blow up. Here, charge that up. <laughs> very cool. Very cool, very cool, very cool. Like I said, with these, we can go quite a ways. It's the the high-tier version of pressure tube can be, used, cam can be used camouflage and tube modules placed on it with the uh, provide additional functionality. This stuff is good for 20 bar, which is also means that we won't be blowing up pipe. We'll be blowing up other things as things go. But those tubes are also needed to be able to craft any of the advanced compressors to include the flux compressor to include some of the programmable controllers the aerial interface which i kind of like pneumatic dynamos which are kind of eh, they, they're they're all right plus the advanced uh air canisters and things like that so that's why we need those so we're gonna let these guys finish up here real quick i think we're about done i think we only gave it three how much air pressure do we have we got a lot we're good because these, the, the next available compressors are a little bit easier to automate. You can automate these furnaces. You can, you know, there's, there's various ways of doing it. We're going to be doing it with the other compressors once we get to that point. Because these, these require fuel to burn. So you have to be kind of careful as to where you make your cutoff for your redstone to turn them off. So that they don't accidentally overburn and blow things up. So. We got the pneumatic wrench. That's great. You guys can go ahead and do some of the more work. So we've got a little bit more stuff going on here. I'm going to kind of let that work its way down so we can get some more PCBs. That's cool. Put those away. And we're going to take a nap. Okay, so we got us our pressure tubes. The next thing that I want to be looking at is the advanced compressor type things. Now, we can. Where are they? Compressor, compressor, compressor. We do this one here. That works fine. You have the advanced air compressor. These guys can process and make 20 bar, max amount of power that you need. However, it says right there, like you might expect from this mod, this machine won't explode when the temperature gets too high. However, it will explode if it gets over pressure. So I have no interest in dealing with something that um, burns fuel for production. So... What we want to be doing is we want to be looking at flux compressors or liquid compressors. Now, liquid compressors can burn various materials like the stuff that we have going on out here in our little refinery setup. So we can burn the LPG, we can burn the gasoline, we can burn every one of these fuels in this little 
thing here and make air pressure out of it. However, what I really want to do for right now is I want to get some flux compressors going on because they're reasonably decent. So, reasonably decent meaning that I can make one of them run and not have to sit there and play with those two guys. So, we do need a couple of more of these. So, one, two, three. And one, two, three. So, we can make a little bit more capacitors and transistors. So, let's see, we have a little bit of, we're about out of compressed iron again. I made a whole bunch of compressed iron for that, and it's now all gone. Yeah, we're completely out of compressed iron. Wonderful. Okay, give me some iron. We got lots of iron. We'll just do it that way. There we go. Cool. So, three, three, and three, and then I will just let it do the work once it gets to that point. So, I'm going to grab oh, about, what is it, six of those? Whoops, too many. Six of these so we can make some more parts. And again, we set these to T-O-R. <laughs> and toss the stuff in. So, that 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 and then i'm just going to throw that whole bit of that stuff in there actually now i want you on the back of there so that those go in first we can also speed these interfaces up if you put the speed upgrades in them and part of me wants to go ahead and make a whole bunch more speed upgrades just to make some of this a little bit faster we do have the sugar we do have the lubricant so it is quite possible to do but we'll let those roll a minute you're busy working on those. You have a few left. We've got quite a few. Man, that makes so much more difference. It's actually maintaining air pressure quite quickly, which is rather surprising to me. So are we getting there yet? You're going to put the whole thing in. Okay. Got the little capacitors. And the transistors. There they come in. It's such a neat little mod. And as soon as it picks those up, all I have to do here is that, and it should pick up the rest of the compressed iron. Cool. Nice. All right. Let's get us one of those set up. So let's see. Compressor. Flux compressor. We're going to need some turbine rotors. Turbine rotors require redstone and gold. Two, three, was it two per? These are also how you get some of the um, drones. So what do we need, six? Cool. I think that's all I need to be crafting over here. We've got all the rest of that done. Sure, nice. Rotor. Now click on the thing, that thing right there. Put that and that in there. And I guess while that's crafting, we can craft this PCB. Cool. That's the extra one we needed there. I thought I had crafted enough, but I guess I didn't. Do not work. Can I not spell? Name contains. Okay, whatever. That's fine. Cool. Let's go build this guy. These guys, he's he's definitely going to help us out quite a bit on on various things when it comes to how we're going to do this because these are a little bit easier to manage. They shut off when you want them to shut off. <laughs> Redstone, what else did we need? Uh, a little bit more redstone. Just grab all of that. And a print circuit board compressed with it. So we should have everything we need. Cool. All right. So I need a compressed gear, which requires an iron ingot. Cool. And a rotor. And the compressor. Nice. Yes. All right. This we're going to be using out here. Now, I don't believe that one of these is going to be able to keep up with this process. But we're going to get rid of these. Thank you. 
and we're going to get rid of those. Thank you. Plug that in, that in, and I think I can just do... I want to be able to use this as part of the production for heat as well. I think that might work. Let's try. You go that way. You hook in. All right. So the flux compressors, as we read in here, they're going to produce heat. So we can use various things to heat them up, cool them down. And I did make sure I got rid of that torch. Yes, I did. Okay. It's going to produce heat as it works. Well, this whole process right here is going to need and eat heat. So what I'm going to hope, and I haven't tested this, is that this is going to try to at least use up some of the heat into the refining system that that produces so that we don't have as much of a problem trying to cool that thing off. So let's grab us a little bit of power. I think I have my, um, there we go. Cool deal. And I'm going to put that right here, maybe. I don't think it's going to see that, is it? We can do this, though. Boink. And there, and no, this to there. All right, now we're going to see what happens. We, we have to keep the temperature in between these little positions here. So what I'm going to hope is that possibly that thing with a little bit of help is going to be able to run some of this. Now, like I said, again, haven't tested it, haven't played with it, haven't seen it. We're going to use 40 RF a tick, so that thing should be capable of doing a few things. And if I give you one of those... We'll see what it does. Because we may not need this. Anyhow. Heat's not coming up very much. Now we can always stick another one of these heat sinks on the opposite side of this. And that will help as well. So, ow. I need to go get some more covered wires. <laughs> 48 degrees. Like I said, that may be a good or a bad thing. I don't know, but it's going to require some stuff. So that's cool. That's what we need to do. I think, like I said, we're going to kind of let it sit here and run a little bit and see what it does. Now, if that thing only uses 40 RF a tick, this thing right here should be capable of producing 88-ish. I think we've got it mostly, probably about 80. I could go back and do a little bit better work on this to make it work a little bit better. But I think, I think it might accidentally work. We're up to 1.9, 1.5, and we needed to have a figured around two to be able to make the refinery work well enough to get to its temperature. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a little cut here. We're not going to stand around and wait on it. And I'm going to fiddle with this and see what it does. So I will be back. Okay, looks like one speed upgrade gets us right around 2.1 bar, which is excellent. And we're keeping a reasonably decent temperature in the system. Now, that does affect, doing, doing this little process here does affect the efficiency of these, this compressor. But as long as we can keep the temperature in between these two areas, we're not going to have a major problem with it. So it's going to be one of those you can, this is, this is not the best way to use this compressor. This is not the way you probably should be using it. But because of the limitations of a couple of things, this is how I'm going to set it up for the moment in time. But what we are going to be able to do eventually is we're going to be able to run a bank of these to manage this refinery system as well as a several more of these thermopneumatic processing plants so that we can actually get rid of 
this kerosene and this fuel and this diesel fuel so that we can actually do more plastic because the end goal basically these are all good fuels you can use them for you know whatever you want to burn them in but the end goal is actually to be using lpg in just about everything because it is way better fuel than all of the other fuels combined so we could actually be running some of this stuff through one of the other compressors one of these liquid compressors which we can now craft which is cool so you know it's not a not a terrible thing and plus we have the ability to get rid of these air compressors because the basic fuel liquid compressors require these air compressors to craft so but that's kind of what i wanted that's kind of where i wanted to be able to get with this little thing so that's awesome now we should have all of our stuff done and i should be able to walk away from that and not have it explode at least at this point in time what is a security upgrade just in case it is a safety tube valve, which is a pressure gauge. We may make one of those eventually. I'm not really concerned about it. But that also means we can get rid of these things for the interior work. And we can use something a little bit better, like the liquid-fueled ones, to do all of the work in here. But for right now, did we finish up all of our stuff? Oh, cool. I didn't need to buy all of those. Huh. Huh. Well, that's cool. I just have a whole bunch of extra parts then. All right, well, we'll put those away. I'm going to grab those and put them back in the system. Click, click, and cool. So we have plenty of these to play with. Those will be used for crafting later. And I think with that, we've got a bunch of more stuff to play with, st neat things to do. And I can actually start building this up the way that I want to build it. So this little system is going to be moving over to this area right here. This is going to be our general storage tank. And I think we're going to be doing uh, probably compressor generation right over on this side because of the little wall being... Um, you know, relatively easy to get over here, and we, that way we can get to our power. So I think next episode I'm going to be crafting a whole lot of steel so that we can start getting work on a decent power plant that I've been talking about for quite a while because this is good and all these are these water wheels are great and I use them quite a bit, but I think it's about time to start looking at something that can produce quite a bit more power than what we're currently making. And if we want to be able to run any more of these or any of the other machines, like I can't run this and this at the same time. Uh, this guy needs about a thousand RF a tick to be able to pull things out. And if we want an arc furnace to be able to craft anything else or crushers or things like that from immersive, we need more power. So I think that's what we're going to be working on next episode. But for now, guys, uh, I guess thank you for much. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next episode. Take it easy, guys.